Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Sabansi. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. Where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment. When we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today we got a pretty interesting show for you guys. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, as y'all know, we're still in the heat of the playoffs. But one of the most disappointing series for me, and I'm sure for many people, has been the Clippers versus Suns series. Why? Because going into that series, I picked the Clippers to win that series, number one. And after you saw how well Kawhi and these guys were playing in the first two games, I think a lot of people began to realize, oh, wait a minute, this guy's just not up here twerking. He actually has a damn good point. Um, I picked Kawhi Leonard and those guys to beat them even without, uh, what is it, even without Paul George. But as y'all know, Kawhi Leonard has missed the last two games uh, in that series. And um, uh, as a matter of fact, he just got ruled out just today that Kawhi Leonard will not be returning um, to the playoffs. Uh, he won't be returning, at least for game five. I think he's probably done for the year. I was listening to Skip Bayless yesterday, and Skip Bayless said the same thing, that Kawhi Leonard, he's not coming back, that he's going to need some type of um, injury. So that that may be a season-ending um, injury. But in the midst of all of this, there's been another storyline. And that storyline is Russell Westbrook. As you all know, Russell Westbrook has been the most hated-on player over the last two years by, you know, in the NBA and by fans and by media. No one has gotten has received as much hate and disrespect. And funny enough, prior to him joining the Lakers, I was never a Russell, West, Russell Westbrook fan. Obviously, I acknowledge his game as a Hall of Famer, but I was never a fan of his. But after seeing what he went through with the Lakers, after a while, some people started rooting for Russell Westbrook. After a while, you get tired of seeing a guy get beat down. You're like, you want to see that guy do well. So a lot of people were rooting for Russell Westbrook to do well once he got traded from the Lakers to the Utah Jazz and ultimately picked up by the Clippers. Initially, when that trade was made, I said it on this platform that I thought that that was a good trade and it's going to work better than it did in L.A. Some people are like, oh, because they were too busy listening to these people on TV. But I was like, no, it's going to work because of the personnel. Because of the personnel is going to be able to complement his, his, uh, his, his skills and attributes and his strengths. And it's going to work better. Is it going to be a perfect fit? No, but I think it's going to work a lot better. That's exactly what I said on numerous occasions. The first 20 games was a rough up and down because they were playing some very, very good teams, but it's going to take time to, to get yourself acclimated to a new system. Fantastic. The playoffs start. Russell Westbrook in these last three games, excuse me, in the, in the playoffs thus far, in, uh, in four games, excuse me, is averaging 26 points per game on 46% shooting from the field. 41% shooting from the three, 88% shooting from the free throw line uh, with 7.5 rebounds, 7.3 assists, 3.8 turnovers, 1.5 steals, 1.8 blocks. And what will not show up in the stat sheet is his incredible defense that he's been playing. He's been pre Russell Westbrook has been tenacious and has been all over the floor. But nevertheless, he still has some critics and his two biggest critics on television are Shannon Sharp and uh, Skip Bayless. I'm sure Shannon Sharp, I like you, but I got I got to tell you the truth, bro. Y'all, 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 y'all overdid it. Y'all overdid it. So what happened? Game four, the Phoenix Suns were able to be victorious against the Los Angeles Clippers. At the end of that game, because Russell Westbrook had like 37 points in that game. At the end of that game, an efficient 37, by the way. They asked um, asked uh, what is it, Kevin Durant and uh, Chris Paul when they were sitting at the lectern. They were like, "Hey, what are your thoughts on Russell Westbrook?" So what we want to do is want to play exactly what KD and CP3 had to say about Russell Westbrook, and then we'll continue with the show. Take a listen to what they had to say here. Kevin, Monty just mentioned that uh, he's never heard as much criticism for an MVP player as much as Russ gets. I mean, what do you think about that, and have you spoken to him about that criticism? About Russ? No, I don't. We don't no, not about criticism. I mean, people are going, people are going to always criticize when you're successful and you know, doing your thing for this long, you know, somebody gonna always find something um, that they don't like about you. But <clears throat> Russ has been resilient his whole life. He come to work, don't say much, just come hoop. So, you know, when he's retired, people are going to really tell the truth about how they feel about his game. Right now, it's a fun thing to do is to make a joke out of Russ. But he, he you know, the way he's been playing is since he got with the Clippers, showed everybody who he really is. I feel like the only people to do that too is the people who don't know basketball. Fact. You know what I'm saying? And don't know what it's like to compete. I know for me, Russ is one of my closest friends. You know what I'm saying? And so people to do that and talk crazy probably wish they could be in that situation. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So you heard their comments. Now, here's what happened. 
What happened was on Undisputed yesterday, they actually ended up ended up ended play, ended up playing those comments because I believe Skip Bayless is an executive producer on that show, one of them who chooses the topics, and they decided that they were going to make a segment out of that to basically respond to the comments of Kevin Durant and CP3. But before we get into those comments, this video is brought to you by our sponsor Aura, who's also the official sponsor of the T-Wolves. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is today? It's identity theft. Imagine trying to log into your email only to see that your password has been changed. Then you start getting weird notifications from your bank and credit cards only to find out that all of your personal and sensitive information has been totally compromised. If you think it can happen to you and your family, just know that in 2020, over 49 million Americans were victims to identity theft, costing them a combined $56 billion. That is why we are excited to partner with Aura, who's the sponsor of this video. Aura is the number one identity theft and financial fraud protection. Aura monitors the dark web and alerts you if any of your passwords and accounts have been breached. And funny enough, after using Aura, I discovered some of my credentials were floating around in the dark web, and the app showed me exactly when and where the breach happened. In addition, Aura allows you to set spending alerts and they'll notify you of any suspicious transactions. Aura is four times faster than any of its competitors in alerting you if someone is trying to open a credit card or obtain a loan using your name. And remember this, every 14 seconds, someone becomes a victim of identity fraud. Don't let it happen to you. Now click the link in the description and try Aura for free for two weeks and see if any of you or your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your free trial at aura.com slash dreamers pro. And when you try Aura, by using the link in the description below. Also know that you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So what we want to do is want to quickly play exactly what Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless had to say in response to KD and CP3. Then we're going to come back and react to this thing. Take a listen to that. Big Russ. I don't have a problem. I think it's great uh, that, that Kevin Durant, who played with Russ for almost a decade, Chris Paul said Russ is one of his closest friends, standing up for him. But two things can be true. Yep. Russ, the last three games, is playing unbelievable. That is true. For the Lakers, his tenure, he didn't play very well. That is also true. Very Two true. things can be true. Here's Russ's numbers in his, whole, in his career with the Lakers. He averaged 15 points a game. He shot 42% from the floor, 29% from the three, 66% from the free throw line, mm. seven to six, six rebounds, three and a half turnovers a game in 28 minutes. Mm. Those are his numbers. With the Clippers. That, was, the, that was a year and... And 52 Two thirds, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so if he, I think he played 78 games, Skip. So you're looking at 130 games. Okay. Because he, I think he played 52 games this year, Skip. Clippers in the regular season, 15 points a game, 49%, 36% from three, 66% free throw. That's seven assists, five rebounds, three and a half turnovers in 30 minutes. Now we're looking at the last three games with the Clippers. Uh -huh. 31 points a game. Yep. 54% field goal percentage. Mm -hmm. 50 points from three, 93% from the free throw line, seven assists, six rebounds, four turnovers a game in 39 minutes. Yep. Then you go, so you count it and say, well, Shannon, look at what? No Paul George, no Kawhi. Clear. Okay. What about when there was no AD, no LeBron? Tell me the game, the three games that Russell Westbrook put together when LeBron and AD was out that looked like the last three games that he played for the Clippers. How many mornings did you come in here? in anguish because you said we signed him to get us through games like Thank last you. night Thank at you. Oklahoma City. Remember right. the game at Oklahoma City we they saw, lost? We saw him skip with Kawhi. Mm -hmm. Played great. There are games that he played with LeBron. He didn't play like he played with Kawhi. Nope. There are games he played with AD. He didn't play like this. Nope. So we removed Kawhi. We moved Paul George. And Russ has been sensational. But tell me the games in which there was no LeBron and no AD that Russ played like he's playing right now. Mm -mm. The man is shooting 50% from three. He's shooting 90% in, from, in the last three. In the last yes. three games. Mm -hmm. that, Skip, that's what they're basing it on. They the are. last three games. Yep. Russ hadn't shot 93% from the free throw line in practice, <laughs> let alone a playoff game. No. Skip, I look, I, I get it. I, I look, I haven't made no bloopers. I just said, hey, he hadn't played well, and he hadn't. But this notion that if two things can't be true isn't true. Russ has been sensational the last three games. But he didn't look like this in the regular season for the Clippers. Hey, I was told by a Lakers insider that LeBron, who wanted Russ, could not wait to get out from under Russ. Well, how can you blame him? You just detailed why. <laughs> yeah. He was a nightmare for them. He was a nightmare. Again, we, I did the blue. You didn't do it. I did the blue portrait uh, uh, tapes because... 
the, the turnovers, and you laughed along, yeah. th they were so bad, they were comical. Yeah. Where you just say, what? He's had comical turnovers in, in right. this series in game one. But he's just playing so well offensively that we, you, you look the other way. Skip, if he was giving you 30, if, hell, if he was giving you 31 points for the Lakers, we wouldn't have had no blooper reel. How? You wouldn't. You might have contended for a championship. Thank you. No, seriously. You missed the playoffs with Russell Westbrook yes. last year as a starter for your team. Darvin talked him into coming off the bench, and I thought he had his moments of, of productivity for the second unit, but he actually fell into the perfect spot. So you heard their response. Hear my thoughts on this. If you listen very carefully to what they were saying, it would expose the reason why Chris Paul said these guys don't know basketball. They genuinely seem to be confused about the entire situation. They're trying to make sense out of him playing so well for two reasons. Number one, for their assumptions in the narratives that they've been propagating out there. That's number one. And number two, because of the sample size of a year and a half of basketball with the Los Angeles Lakers. So they're, they're, they're juxtaposing these two realities and it's not rec uh, uh, reconciling with them. They can't really understand it, right? They can't really understand it. Here is the fact of the matter. The fact of the matter. Russell Westbrook, before he became a Los Angeles Laker, he was a Washington Wizard. In that season, as a Washington Wizard, he scored 22 points per game on 44% shooting, 31.5% from the three, 65.6% 66, from the free throw line, with 11.5 rebounds, 11.7 assists, 4.8 turnovers, and 1.4 steals. That year, Russell Westbrook was, was able to get that Washington Wizards team into the play-in, and of course, he averaged a triple-double. Fantastic. The year prior, he was putting up great numbers. The year before that, putting up great numbers. The year before that, he was putting up great numbers. Initially, when the rumor was out there that Russell Westbrook may be getting traded to the Lakers, Shannon Sharp went on television and said he doesn't think is a, is a good fit. He doesn't see how it fits properly. Well, what was he talking about? The reason he, be he believed it wasn't a good fit was quite obvious because the Lakers were a lousy shooting team. And Russell Westbrook is not known to be a guy that stretches the floor on a consistent basis. Neither is LeBron, neither are these other guys. So they didn't really, they didn't really have any spacing, and therefore it didn't work. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't work well. It didn't work well. You now remove him out of that system, and you see him putting up these great numbers. Why? Not because he's having some type of blood transfusion or he's 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 he, he, he he's transforming into another person. It has everything to do with the personnel. And oh, by the way. The fact that he feels slighted by people out there in the media. A lot of people wrote him off and has given him added motivation. You cannot discount the factor of motivation in all of this. You can't discount it. You put those two things together and you get the type of performances that you get here. Now, here's my issue with some of the people that have been that have been really um, 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 transfixed on going after going after Russell Westbrook. They've been saying, well, you can clearly see that they were referring to his time in L.A. They were, they were comparing what they're seeing now to what he did in L.A. And the question I have for you guys is why are you stopping it with his time in L.A.? Why are you only, only juxtaposing what you're seeing now versus what you saw in L.A.? Why are you stopping there? The fact of the matter is this. Russell Westbrook could have retired the year before he got to L.A. And he was already going to go to the Hall of Fame, period, end of story. He was already a top 75 player, period, end of story. How the hell do you think he got on the top 75 list? How do you think he did it? Leading the league, in, I think he led the league in steals. Let me, let me, let me, let me pull up Russell Westbrook stats, uh, um, rather, rather career resume. And let's go, and let's go through some of the things he accomplished before he became a Los Angeles Lakers. Because some of these people seem to be under some type of illusion that Russell Westbrook was in a good player. Let's, let's get, to, let, let's get to some of the facts here. Russell Westbrook was a nine-time All-Star before he joined the Lakers, a regular season MVP in 2017. Two-time All-Star game MVP before he joined the Lakers. Two-time All-First NBA, uh, he made, uh, wait, one, two, 
five, seven. He made seven all NBA defensive teams. He led the league in scoring two times. He led the league in assists three times. And he was a top 75 player all before he joined the Lakers. What the hell are you bozos talking about? What are you bozos talking about? This is what happens when you hate so much. You lose all of your ability to reason. He was already going to the Hall of Fame, you dweebs. What's wrong with some... The reason The reason I'm so hard on some of these guys is because they just won't stop. They just will not stop. What is wrong with you people? What's wrong with you guys? What's the issue with you and Russell? What's the issue? He's If, if, if you're a Laker fan, he's no longer on your team. What's it, what is it your business? What is it your business? Skip Bayless says Russell Westbrook is against his basketball religion. It's not against his monetary religion. Oh, you thought he was talking talking about Russell Westbrook every single day because he loves him? He knows he makes money. He knows he makes money. You're there slandering the guy, exploiting him, exploiting him, and exploiting him at every turn, monetarily, and messing up his public image. And then you got these jokers running around in comment sections, twerking it all over the internet, acting like as if they're making some points when all they're doing is running up there regurgitating everything they heard on TV. Most of these guys are sheep. That's why I don't get into a long back and forth with you because the moment you do that, you quickly realize that these guys don't know what the hell they're talking about. First, they said he was trash. Then they're like, no, but wait a minute. Now he's putting up good numbers. And they're like, but he's not winning. But I thought you thought it was trash. Why would you expect the guy that you thought was trash all of a sudden to win? This is the stupidity of these people. Let it go. What is wrong with you guys running around hating on people like this? What is wrong? Why do you think they took so much offense to it? Because he was talking about them. Who else are they talking about? They're not talking about me. They're not talking about me. They're not talking about Stephen A. Smith. Who do you think they're talking about? I don't understand what this fixation is over hating on Russell Westbrook. What is it? What's wrong with you? Some of you guys. I don't understand it. Oh, was he, was he, was he good? Was he good? Was he, was he? he was already a Hall of Famer. He was already a Hall of Famer, whether you like it or not. Whether y'all like it or not, I'm not surprised at any of this because it's basketball. It's all about personnel and fit and coach, coaching, period. This is not magic happening up here. These guys are like, well, I wonder what happened. Well, look at his time in L.A. Why are you stopping in L.A.? Did Russell Westbrook just start playing basketball two years ago? No. The only reason you're doing that because it supports your, it supports your, your, your narrative. The talking point must be the reason the Laker failed was because he was so bad. And you can't get rid of that notion because the minute you let go of that talking point, you now have to look in another direction. You have to take a more macro approach to the, uh, to the issue with the Lakers. And no one wants to do that. Because the Lakers is all about scapegoating. That's the whole story. I'm watching the Clippers game. They're talking basketball. I watch the Lakers game. Well, look at Anthony Davis, man. He only has two points. Well, what about this guy? What about it's all narratives? What is up with you guys and hating on Russell Westbrook? Let it go. Let it go. This doesn't surprise me because it's basketball. These are my thoughts. Whatever y'all think, leave your thoughts in the comments. And if I offended some of you guys, I don't care. Catch you on the next show.